the next result is regarding the closeness and continuity so what will be the relation between the closeness and the continuity it's like the open set we have proved that if f is continuous if and only if the inverse image of an open set is open so in the same manner we have a result for close so that is say that let x1 comma d1 and x2 comma d2 be a matrix spaces and f is a function from x to y then prove that f is continuous on x1 if and only if every closed set f in x2 implies f inverse of f that means the inverse image of a closed set is a closed subset of x1 so ultimately it says that the inverse image of an closed set is a closed set let us try to discuss the proof the proof is very trivial or i can say easy if we use the result that inverse image of an open set is open if and only if f is continuous so i will start first proving this side that means suppose that f is continuous on x1 and let us assume that f is a closed subset of x2 so we'll state we are assuming that f is closed in f2 x2 we have to prove that f inverse of f is a closed in x1 so therefore if it is f is a closed in x2 we know that the complement that is x2 minus f is a closed sorry it will be open subset of x2 because we know that if x is open and its complement will be closed in that set so that according to this f x2 minus f which is a complement of this f is open in x2 since f is continuous the inverse image of this will be also open so since f is continuous f inverse of x2 minus f is open in x1 but what is this f inverse of x2 minus f what will be this set it is f inverse of x2 minus f inverse of f but f inverse of x2 is nothing but the x1 minus f inverse of f this is actually a one of the a set theoretical result it says that f inverse of a minus b is equal to f inverse of a minus f inverse of b which i can give you as an exercise to do it verify this one you can verify by this this is a set theoretical result so from this what we can say therefore x minus f1 f f inverse of f is open in x1 so therefore f inverse of f is a closed in x1 so it's proved that the inverse image of a closed 
set is closed now the next is the converse part that means this part suppose that f is closed in x2 implies f inverse of f is closed in x1 what to prove we have to prove that f is continuous on x1 so we'll prove that the inverse image of open side is open so i'll start with let g be an any open subset of x2 so now you just look at in that what is f inverse of x2 minus g as for the same argument we have discussed earlier that is f inverse of x2 minus f inverse of g we can write this is as this is x1 minus f inverse of g so this is i am using this result now this g is open so its complement will be closed since g is open in x2 x2 minus g is closed in x2 and as per the assumption that means f is closed in x2 f inverse of f is a closed in x1 so we can say that therefore f inverse of x2 minus g is closed in x1 this is assumption by our assumption we can say this therefore and from this previously we have already derived what is f inverse of x2 minus g we will state this is 1 so from this one we can say that this is x1 minus f inverse of g is closed in x1 this is because of 1 so therefore the complement is closed so we can say that f inverse of g is open in x1 so we have started with g is open in x2 we have proved that its inverse is open in x1 so that for we can say that the inverse image of open set is open and hence f is continuous on x1 so which proves that now we have a seven statement equivalent statements are there let us recall all the statement the first one is f is continuous on x the second statement for every a belongs to x if i want to say that f is continuous for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists a delta greater than 0 such that d1 of x comma a less than delta implies d2 of f of x comma f of a less than epsilon the third statement says that for every a belongs to x for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists a delta greater than 0 such that x is belongs to s delta of a implies f of x is belongs to f epsilon of f of a the fourth statement says that the inverse image that means for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists a delta greater than 0 such that such that f s delta of a is a subset of inverse image of this quantity that is s epsilon so it says that the inverse image of every open sphere 
S epsilon f of a contains some open sphere S delta of a. The fifth statement says that for every, and this has to be every, for every a, it has to be there. For every a belongs to x, there exists some, some sequence which is in x such that xn is tends to a, this will imply f of xn will converge to f of a. The sixth statement is says that f is continuous if and only if the g is open in x2 implies f inverse of g is open in x1. And the seventh statement is says that g is closed or I can say as per the usual notation f is closed in x2 implies f inverse of f is closed in x1. So these are the seven statements which are equivalent statements and whenever some examples or some result you have to prove you can use any one of the statement to prove or to discuss that. Let us try to discuss one of the example here. The example state like this. Let f be a continuous function. Continuous real valued function. On a matrix space x. Let A be the set of all points x belongs to x such that f of x is greater than or equal to A. Then question is prove or disprove that A is closed. Now to prove or disprove this result, what is A? Let us write down A here. So here A is given set of all points x in x such that f of x is greater than or equal to 0. So as we have discussed in the previous one, uh, Lee, we have discussed the same kind of example. So we can use that technique also there here that means this is nothing but the set of all points x such that f of x is belongs to these are all positive points so it is close interval 0 to infinity so this is nothing but the set of all points x such that x is belongs to f inverse of close interval 0 to infinity. So this is the set which is says that it is a inverse of or it is an inverse image of this set and this inside set that is close interval 0 to infinity we know it is a closed set. So inverse image of a closed set will be a closed. So we can write that is that we know that this is a closed set and given that f is continuous we know that the inverse image of a closed set is closed therefore f inverse of this is a closed set so that means this set A, which we have given, is a closed set. So here I have used the seven statement to prove. You can use any one of the statement to prove this example. Let me try for the fifth. I mean, you use the fifth one, and using the fifth also, we can say that you can use the sixth also if you want. You can use any one of them. But whatever the feasible, you can use that. So let us give you a method two for the same example. 
and i'm using the the fifth statement which we have here that is the sequence which is converged conversion then its image will be also converged so our objective now we know that it is a closed set so it is sufficient to prove that this a contains all its limit point okay so we shall show that a is closed set so it is sufficient to prove that a contains all its limit point okay so a limit points means there exists a some sequence let's say consider let x be a limit point of let x comma a be a a limit point of sorry i have i should not write it long today x be a limit point of a that means there exists some sequence x and belongs to a such that so i should write there is a sequence x and a sequence xn in a such that xn converts to x as n times to infinity but what is given f is continuous so that will implies f of xn will convert to f of x as n times to infinity by the fifth result which we have here that is xn is converts to a then f of xn is converts to a under the continuous map so using that we can say that f of xn is converts to f of a now what is the it says that what will be says that each x f of xn they are in a since this xn is in a and what is the set a we have it says that it is the set of all points which are greater than or equal to 0 so it says that since xn is belongs to a we know that f of xn is greater than or equal to 0 so which implies that its limit is also has to be greater than or equal to 0 and therefore if it is greater than or equal to 0 we can say that x is belongs to a so we have started with x is a limit point of a and we have proved that it is a limit point is in the set and since this a is arbitrary point we can say that a is a closed set so which completes the another another way you can prove that that set is an closed set if you have any question you can ask